各位朋友，大家好，大家晚安，欢迎大家今天来参加我们二零二二年的 European Study Talk 留学欧洲说明会。那这个活动是由欧洲在台官方单位联合举办，我们将从二零二二年的九月一直进行到二零二三年的二月。整个系列活动，我们将邀请到了超过五十多所的欧洲知名的高等校院来进行留学欧洲线上说明会。国家有德国、英国、法国、比利时、瑞典、瑞士以及意大利。等专业的顶尖欧洲大学将接力的为台湾学生你们的留学欧洲计划来指点迷津。除了商管学院、资讯学院，甚至还有著名的理工、设计、观光、医学科系等知名的院校都有加入。他们将提供给你最新的课程资讯、最新的教育制度，还有申请流程。以及奖学金，还有毕业后在当地可以工作或者是创业的资讯，你一定可以收集到你所需要的资讯，以及还有听到学校或者是学长姐们的这些经验分享，来都要来帮助你准备你的申请。那今晚留学欧洲部署未来，我们要带给您的是国际研究跟专业技能，就从留学德国开始。那待会再从七点钟开始，时间由德国布莱登啊布兰登堡理工大学。那接下来七点五十分是由德国弗莱堡大学啊，这两所都是在德国是。呃，以及有高国际声望、顶尖研究型的这个，甚至是历史最悠久的这个精英型的公立研究型以及技术型大学，他们都将要告诉你如何来强化你的未来，以及你的专业，甚至还要怎么样来建立你未来的人脉。他们也当然会解说我们国际学生的这个留学跟职来的路该怎么样来规划。那我先介绍一下德国布莱登理工，再来呃，德国布莱登堡理工大学。他们学校是一所综合型的大学。布莱登堡工业呢，工业大学呢是国际公认的创新型的技术大学，重点的专业在呃环境、能源、材料、建筑以及还有呃资讯以及通信技术。那这个学校有四个学院：自然科学以及还有呃资讯科技呃科学学院、建筑呃建筑设计规划学院以及机械电气工程学院、环境工程学院。那布莱登堡呃州工业大学呢，它特色是在提供了独一无二的这个呃研究跟探索机会。那这个学校的机械工程和电气工程的硕士学位课程，在著名的德国高等教育中心呢，排练非常的前面。那我们待会就来听听德国布莱登堡理工大学可以怎么样来帮你部署你的未来，以及还有呃，你该如何来做准备？呃，学校的申请。那待会在这个进呃讲座进行当中，请你务必要将你的问题，或者是呃依照你个人的情况来将你的问题打在我们的 Q&A 的栏位中。那我们在最后 Q&A 的呃时段里，我们会请肖代来为我们做解答。那紧接着后面是七点五十分，有德国弗莱堡大学。那待会校代会跟我们更呃介绍给我们更详细的课程介绍，以及申请，以及要求呃申请的要求以及程序，甚至还有学校生活以及费用等的资讯，请大家务必都要呃留到最后听到最后哦。好 ，OK， so now that's welcome NK from 呃德国布莱登堡理工大学啊、呃、BTU this university。So I think、uh, we have one minute ahead. So over to you, NK. All right. So、um, yeah, welcome everyone.、Um, I'm very glad that、uh, you today found the way into this、um, European study talk.、Um, we are very、uh, happy that you're interested in our university and me.、Um, my name is Anke Meisner. I'm the、uh, I'm working at the International Relations Office. And、um, our student Christoph Zeiger will,、um, yeah, just tell you some news、uh, or some facts about our university,、um, some interesting facts. And、um, we are also very open for questions. So、um, please do not hesitate to use、um, the Q and A section,、um, as Diane probably、um, explained just right now,、um, to ask us some question, and we will answer them after our presentation. All right. So, first of all, I would like、uh, to introduce where the、uh, BTU is actually located.、Um, our university is called Brandenburg University of Technology, Cottbus-Senftenberg, and、um, 
the uh, in the name you can already see Brandenburg, which is um, a federal state uh, in Germany um, in the northeastern part. Um, so. Um, where the little yellow dot is on this map. Um, this is basically us. Um, we all, always like to say we're uh, in the heart of Europe. Um, so uh, very uh, centrally uh, located uh, in Europe. And um, yeah, uh, in uh, Brandenburg, um, if you uh, need some, some um, yeah, navigation, Brandenburg is the federal state which is situated around Berlin, the capital of Germany. Um, yeah, just here, um, a quick uh, or a greater um, uh, outlook in where we are. Um, Brandenburg uh, University of Technology Cottbus-Senftenberg, we have two, um, three campus actually. Um, two are in Cottbus and one is in Senftenberg and um, both um, university cities are connected via train. Um, the train line uh, uh, runs every half an hour. Um, and uh, yeah, it takes about 30 minutes uh, to actually uh, get to one uh, or the other campus. And me personally, I actually live in Senftenberg and I travel to Cottbus um, to work there. So um, yeah, it's a very convenient uh, connection via train. Uh, also, we are very close to Berlin. Um, there's also a great uh, train connection from Cottbus and from Senftenberg, which takes you about one and a half hours uh, to get to Berlin. And um, also there's a possibility to uh, visit other cities uh, from our um, yeah, beautiful university cities, for example, Dresden, um, if you've heard from it, uh, also very easily reachable by train. Um, or um, always a visit, um, worth a visit is, for example, Poland, which is also quite close um, to Cottbus. So um, from Cottbus, there is also the possibility not only to get to know our university city, but also other regions in Germany. Yeah, and um, for um, what our region is correct characteristic for um for uh, first and foremost we have uh, lots of nature actually um uh, there is a national park uh, which is the called spreewald um which is characterized by lots of small rivers and uh, yeah a lot of nature lots of historical buildings as you can see here in the pictures and of course yeah it's a for it's a big foresty area and um, yeah it's just a great way to um, relax and uh, chill out uh, especially in the warm seasons here in Cottbus which are spring summer and early autumn um, and yeah it's a it's just a, a, a great um, location to be at and to do some sports in and around Cottbus and Senftberg, there are a lot of new lakes. Um, they are um, um, artificial lakes um, and they are uh, constantly growing. So um, they are building an, a new um, uh, lake uh, yeah, environment here. And there's a lot of possibilities to do sports activities. So a lot of water sports, um, a lot of um, yeah, just hiking or uh, biking. It's just a great area to be very active and to get to know the area um, during these activities. Um, and uh, of course, our university uh, is uh, in Cottbus and in Senftenberg. And we are very proud that we are very diverse and colorful university. Um, I will get to this in a second, but uh, currently we're more than a third of our students are international students. Um, so a lot of students come from different countries, um, from actually over 100 countries right now. And um, we have a very colorful uh, community, international community, and we celebrate this with um, yeah, different events. There is, for example, this event called Cottbus Open. Um, this is a uh, festival for all Cottbus, and there are a lot of food stands, for example, so our international um, students uh, prepare their traditional foods um, also for the Cottbus um, community, and this is always, yeah, quite um, a festival to go there and to just enjoy how colorful and diverse we are. Yeah, and with this short introduction, I would like to um, get, give you a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. 
Um, I will go into um, what the BTU actually is and what we offer. Um, then Christoph will take over and explain the five reasons uh, why you should study at BTU and also give you some insights um, of his studies and his experience at the B BTU right now as he is still a student. And um, to sum up the presentation, I will give you some information about the application process. And um, yeah, as I said, please use the Q and A's um, function so that we can also discuss your questions afterwards. During the presentation, we will also have some QR codes and um, yeah, some links. So um, yeah, if uh, if you're interested, uh, you can also find further information there. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about what do we actually offer. Currently, um, these are the numbers from uh, winter semester um, 2022, so the, the winter semester which has started. Um, we are offering 59 study programs, and as we are a, a University of Technology, um, they're predominantly, predominantly in STEM subjects, of course, but we also have quite a variety of uh, subjects in other um, yeah, uh, research areas, for example, urban planning and architecture, social work, um, or even uh, musical uh, pedagogy. So there's a lot of um, study programs to choose from. Um, currently, there are 6,720 students enrolled. So we're um, on the on German in, in German comparison uh, regarding universities. We're quite a, a medium scale university, and out of these students, there are, as I already said, um, over a third uh, international students. Um, so there is a big international community. We offer 16 international study programs. Um, these are our English language study programs. And um, yeah, as I said, we're very close to a few great cities and great uh, destinations um, uh, only by train. And um, yeah, what we always like to um, highlight is um, uh, in, we are a region of Germany, which gets a lot of sun, actually, 1,916 hours of sunshine per year. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's quite a lot for Germany. So um, if you uh, decide to uh, do your studies here in uh, Cottbus or Senftenberg, you will be also experience some great sunny days. Um, just to give you a really um, a basic overview um, of our study programs, um, uh, the BTU is constantly um, yeah, re-evaluating their, their study offers and um, developing them further uh, in order to uh, do studies and research around essential topics um, of the current times. And um, they have now uh, oriented themselves uh, amongst four um, research profiles. These include energy transition and decarbonization, global change and transformation processes, health and life sciences and artificial intelligence. And uh, surrounding these, all of our study programs, which are offered in six faculties, um, yeah, try to do uh, some great research, some excellent research in order to um, find answers for the questions of tomorrow. Um, a faculty in Germany is um, just a, a word for yeah, um, an area of, of uh, subjects uh, put together. Um, so you see we have six faculties, um, which range from, as I already said, the STEM uh, subjects, uh, environment and natural sciences over mechanical and engineering and energy systems. Um, we have the architecture and urban planning faculty, which is quite a big faculty at our university and has uh, quite a long tradition. Um, business and social sciences, and of course, the social work and healthcare and music faculty. Um, with this QR code, you can also check out all our study programs on our website. Um, this is just a quick overview for you um, uh, regarding our international study programs. So the programs which are um, conducted in English, um, there is one bachelor's program and uh, a few master's programs and a few uh, PhD programs, so doctoral studies. Um, and we also offer more study programs uh, in cooperation with um, partner universities. So um, when you decide uh, for a specific um, uh, study program, for example, um, 
here um, it would be urban design, for example. This is a, a joint degree. Um, this means that you're studying at BTU, but also at our partner universities in Egypt. Um, you can also find further information regarding all these study programs on our websites. And uh, of course, uh, yeah, also ask us questions. Um, I will give you contact information for the International Relations Office uh, at BTU when we're at the end of our presentation. Next to our international study programs, we also, of course, have a wide range of German study programs. And um, yeah, if you're interested in uh, doing a German study programs, but have not yet reached the um, ne necessary uh, German skill level, um, we offer also a variety of programs in order to um, yeah, learn German and then uh, continue your studies at BTU or even um, uh, reach the so-called uh, German education entrance qualification if you don't have um, the uh, uh, regarding uh, entrance qualification right now. Our two uh, language programs, um, we have two of them. Uh, the first one is an on-campus program, uh, which is called Bridge to Studies. Um, this is either a one-year program or one semester program. And um, uh, will be, uh, yeah, you, you will be finishing this program with a DSH examination. Um, this program uh, takes place at the BTU, at the campus, and um, yeah, is a, a very intensive language program, which then leads you into your studies at BTU. The second program is the so-called Springboard University Germany, um, uh, German, excuse me, and this is our online offer. Um, so this is an offer specifically for you if you uh, would like to start your uh, German intensive course even um, from your home country um, to have the year for your preparation, for example, regarding visa uh, processes and so on. And with this, this is a one year program. Um, when you apply for a B BTU degree program, you will then um, be forwarded into Springboard uh, to learn German and to um, yeah, develop your German so that you can start your degree program. And uh, Springboard then finishes with an test staff, um, which, uh, which also includes an on site preparation. So at the end of your springboard year, you can come to Germany, um, do the preparation, and then take the test stuff and go on into your BTU studies. And then um, we have the ESIST. Um, this is the so-called college prep year, or you might also know it under Studienkolleg, um, which we have in two uh, variations, uh, the engineering and the uh, the the STEM courses, and um, this is uh, next to a German course, you will also have um, yeah, these courses in order to receive um, the entrance qualification for Brandenburg, and then you can also start your studies at BTU. These are all offers um, from different, um, yeah, different uh, departments uh, in our university. You can find the uh, contact information down here and also the re uh, regarding that pages. So, um, yeah, with this, I, I would like to give the mic uh, to uh, Christoph, who will now uh, get into um, the reasons why you should decide to study at our university. Yeah, hello from my side. I hope, um, I hope I'm hearable, Anke. Right. Okay, I'm Christoph. Um, I am right now studying um, at the Faculty 6, um, Urban Planning and Regional Planning. And I'm in a supportive role for the um, International Relations Office as a student. And I will introduce you into the student's life a little bit and give you five reasons why um, it is good to study at the BTU. Uh, first of all, uh, as Anke already mentioned, we are a pretty diverse and international university with a lot of students from uh, all across the world which is um, um, feasible at the campus. So if you uh, go uh, across the campus, um, I mean, English is one of the, the most spoken languages. And um, when it comes to cultural events, for example, um, the students take um, advantage and um, organize a lot of international um, yeah, activities. Like uh, two weeks ago, we had an African culture night and in one of our little clubs in the vicinity of the BTU, 
And so the uh, diversity is feasible um, and not just a word. And if you, um, yeah, engage and if you um, try to, you can uh, find easily friends, uh, maybe of, from, from your country. So it's um, very international and I like it very much. Um, the second point is also very important for me because um, it's about the, the personal keep from professors to um, students because um, our university is not that big and our study courses are not that um, overfilled with students. Um, the personal contact between professors and students is very uh, near and familiar. So if you have any inquiries or questions, um, they're getting answered pretty quick and pretty um, precise. So um, that's one of the big adventures uh, and advantages I experienced in the last two years uh, I've been studying and which is very important for the students. And um, I, I don't think in, um, yeah, in students or in uh, universities like Berlin, the personal key is that, uh, that good um, in favor for the students. So um, the small group projects um, will help you to get into contact with students and with um, employees and professors pretty quick. So that's what's my experience right now. Uh, can you go ahead? Yeah. The third point is very important for a lot of students I've talked to because um, in comparison to um, other um, cities like Berlin or uh, Munich or Stuttgart, the um, studies here are pretty affordable because we have no tuition fees. We have um, the so-called semester ticket, which is um, like a little a card you can carry around and which will give you access to all public transports in Berlin and um, the state of Brandenburg. So you can travel um, with no extra cost from Berlin like every day and night to, to the university and take every bus and every train uh, inside the state of Brandenburg in Berlin. And it's pretty good for traveling, for exploring, um, or if you like to decide to live in Berlin, you can get to Cottbus without any extra cost. So that's um, pretty good. And the accommodations around the university and in the vicinity of the uh, university are pretty cheap. So you can, depending on which, um, yeah, which quality you want to like from 200 to 300 euros, uh, it's pretty affordable. Um, and if you like to get a flat inside the city, um, they're not that expensive as well. So the living costs in Cottbus or in generally in Eastern Germany are pretty low compared to the other places in Germany. And the fourth point is um, the, um, yeah, the uh, modernity we offer right now. So on the right side, you see uh, the big building on the upper left. Um, it's uh, um, the library that's pretty new. So I think it's 15 years old, but um, it's a very good place to study. It's very calm. Um, they have a lot of books. They have a lot of online um, uh, yeah, activities to offer. Um, and in general, um, the, all the faculties are pretty good set up for the future. For example, um, I study in faculty six and we have uh, yeah, set up extremely new, um, um, yeah, what's called um, ateliers. And it's pretty good and pretty, um, uh, yeah, comfortable to study. Um, the the next thing is the campus itself is pretty um, yeah, close, pretty compact, as you see on the left side. So um, everything is reachable within five or six minutes to, to go per feet. So you don't have to get to another um, part of the city to, to study. It's all compact. Um, it's very yeah, comfortable, in my opinion. Um, on a down, you see the, um, the library. Um, and from there on to the top north of the campus, it's like five minutes um, for a walk. It's not that far. On the right side, you see the, um, the sports and the gymnasium and the, the outdoor sports field, uh, which offers a lot of um, opportunities, but I come there later. Um, you can go ahead, please. Uh, as I already said, we have a lot of cultural uh, events, especially in the summer and springtime with um, very diverse and international influence. So it's never getting boring, um, in my opinion. If you know where to go, um, there's everything, there's everywhere, there's something to do and people to meet. 
Um, as, I, as Anke already mentioned, we have a lot of uh, rural areas, a lot of um, lakes, a lot of seas, a lot of bikeways. And when it comes to sportive activities um, alongside the Esprit, it's pretty uh, comfortable. It's, um, it offers a lot of um, activities when it comes to water, canoe, um, sailing, and biking, of course. And the restaurant culture and Corpus itself is very vivid, um, comparable to, to its size. So um, I think it's never getting boring here. Um, for the next slide, I will show you a little glimpse of my studies. As I already mentioned, I study urban and regional planning, which is um, located in the faculty of six. So we have a lot of context to the um, study course of architecture. Whilst architecture is more about constructing the houses and yeah, more focused on the house, we focus more on um, city districts and environmental sciences, urban technology. And our studies goes from design aspects in the early modules to a more technical aspects, um, urban development, law, social sciences, and it's for example, uh, right now we have a project about uh, wind turbines and um, the acceptance for um, uh, citizens and what influences um, acceptances for uh, wind turbines in the uh, rural areas. So it's about social stuff and it's very interdisciplinary. And yeah, uh, I really like it. And um, the personnel and the professors are pretty near to us. They're very familiar. And um, when I have a problem or inquiry, they're there at the spot to help. And that's what that's the quality for me right now. Um, when it comes to study uh, and living the student's life, as I already mentioned, the campus itself offers a lot. Um, so you don't have to um, leave the campus, basically, even if you want to um, have a good social life. We have uh, a swimming hall. In the very vicinity, we have the gymnasium, which offers um, sport activities like um, volleyball, football, bouldering, badminton, um, swimming courses um, in the swimming hall north of the um, campus. We have little um, pop-up clubs. I call them like this because they are um, pretty small, but they are pretty interactive. So um, there are the bigger clubs in the city center, which is like two kilometers uh, far from the campus but these little pop-up clubs are mo mostly students clubs uh, and the parties there are mostly organized by students um, and their um, cultural heritage um, plays a role there and there's every week there are one or two bigger um, events to take place and like yesterday we had a big um, party for the um, faculty six um, so it's never getting boring and <laughs> We even have a little market a night shop, which is open until 3 a.m. So if you want to get some drinks or um, some snacks, um, it's almost every time open. Yeah. So if you if you um, want to connect to people, it's pretty easy from my experience. Um, and due to the fact that the cost of living are relatively cheap, um, you can afford a lot of things which you might not can afford in bigger cities like Berlin or Munich. Um, that's my experience and I really like it to, to study here and I, I live here and I study here and um, I can only recommend. But uh, we have um, a lot of bikeways, um, we have a lot of cultural heritage when it comes to buildings and um, it's a relatively small city with 100,000 inhabitants but it offers everything um, what you need. When it comes to um, yeah bigger events you can get to Berlin like in without one hour and uh, pretty comfortable with the train. So um, it's pretty well situated in my opinion. Um, so um, as, yeah, um, what we um, uh, really uh, highlighted uh, quite a few times now is um, that it's quite um, affordable to study at BTU. And um, you can see here just yeah a quick overview um, in the uh, yellow uh, table. Uh, you can see um, the costs, which are of course very important uh, if you decide to study um, abroad. Um, for you, of course, Germany um, would be uh, quite uh, quite 
far abroad and um, so just that you are prepared um, what you can expect. Uh, currently, there is um, a semester fee. Um, this is not a tuition fee. Um, it's a fee um, which is, has to be paid by all the students um, and which basically covers um, all administrative um, work at the university and um, currently also the semester ticket. Um, this is a, a ticket for the public transport within Brandenburg and Berlin, as um, Christoph already mentioned, and the semester fee is 350 euros for a whole semester, so for six months. Um, then there's, of course, rent. Um, uh, you can either decide to live in a dormitory, um, which are very close to campus. So basically, you can just you walk just over the street and you are on the campus um, or privately rented apartments, um, which are still um, affordable in Cottbus and also um, what is also, yeah, a big pro of Cottbus and Senftenberg that you will find apartments uh, in other cities, uh, other big university cities, um, just like uh, uh, Berlin or Munich, um, they are, it is very, very difficult to find uh, affordable living space. And um, yeah, so this is also something you should keep in mind. Um, then there is a mandatory health insurance. Um, which you should uh, expect to be around about 110 euros, um, which is necessary to be enrolled. Um, so that is something uh, which needs to be uh, paid um, uh, uh, either way. And um, yeah, for groceries, um, so um, basically getting uh, stuff to eat, uh, we uh, calculated about 170 euros. And then of course, um, it also uh, depends on what you uh, doing outside of studying um, for um, uh, leisure activities or school materials, um, we calculated a maximum of 300 euros, um, which in total, of course, it depends on uh, how much you spend on each of these positions, um, is around about 700 to 1,000 euros, um, which you need to be calculating for a month. Um, and uh, next to this table, you see uh, just a quick uh, calculation um, because I know it is also important to know how uh, you will finance your studies. So there are, for example, scholarships. Um, uh, we always recommend to check out the DAAD, the DAAD um, data bank with scholarships. They are very specific um, for each study program, for each background, um, also for countries. Um, so please check that out. And also the university offers some um, yeah, scholarships. Um, but there's also, of course, the possibility to work uh, next to your um, next to your study. So, for example, just like Christoph works uh, at the International Relations Office, there are um, a few uh, or a good range of opportunities to work at Cottbus. And um, currently, the minimum wage is uh, 12 euros in Germany. Um, so um, we're calculated with 13 euros an hour and working uh, 20 hours a week for four weeks. So you, so you will, would be able to earn um, just what you need to live um, as a student. So um, yeah, I, I can just uh, repeat what Christoph says. Um, with the student budget, it's, uh, you can uh, afford a comfortable living and also have fun and yeah, enjoy uh, your life. and. Uh, your semesters abroad, uh, get to know the culture um, without worrying too much about the costs and the financing. And now I would like to just give you a quick overview uh, on how to apply at our university. Um, of course, the first important or the first thing you should do is you should decide what do you want to study. Um, the uh, QR code for a study program I've already shown you, um, and most of our study programs do not have a minimum GPA. Um, so yeah, just um, do your research and uh, find uh, what fits your interest best. And um, then um, for you, um, if you have a, a international um, a entrance qualification, that means you will need to apply through UniAssist. So um, uh, while preparing your documents, uh, you will need your uh, uh, entrance qualification and of course your proof of language proficiency. And uh, with an international um, entrance qualification, just like an international bachelor, or an international um, yeah, secondary school um, graduation, you will have to um, apply through UniAssist. 
Um, there is um, a, these we are partnering with UniAssist, and they are um, checking and um, yeah, controlling your uh, uh, documents and then forwarding to us. Um, so when uh, applying, you only need to apply through UniAssist, and then it will be forwarded to us for further um, uh, yeah checking and then also sending out the admission letters. Um, what is important to know um, is that the timelines um, for when to apply um, differ from whether you have an international um, entrance qualification or a German uh, entrance qualification. So for example, if you attend a German school uh, in Taiwan, then uh, you might even uh, be um, eligible for the German deadlines as you have then um, a German qualification. Um, but yeah, for now, um, we're currently in the um, application phase for the summer semester, the upcoming summer semester 2023. And um, uh, uh, UniAssist is already open. So if you're interested, um, there's already the possibility to um, apply for a, a specific uh, study program. Um, but please be aware um, in summer semester, we have um, a very limited uh, intake uh, regarding our study programs. So the majority of intake happens in winter semester and there uh, also all study programs will be available. Um, for international um, entrance qualification, the deadline is January 15 uh, for summer semester and um, also for um, our language programs. For winter semester, which will be starting in October next year, uh, so which we all, uh, just started right now, um, the, um, the UniAssist portal is um, expected to be open uh, in mid of April. So if you're interested in uh, applying for winter semester, um, please check out um, the UniAssist yeah, around mid of April. Um, it should be open and then you should be able to apply for our study programs. And um, the deadline for um, applying um, is there are a few different deadlines regarding on the study program. So it's either May 1st, June 1st, or July 15th. Um, and if you're interested in a PhD, so a doctoral study, um, there are no specific deadlines. Um, just get into, um, yeah, get into contact with the uh, program coordinators. They are very happy to help you um, if you're interested in PhD programs. Um, we have two different versions of PhD programs. It's either doctoral studies, which are structured, uh, for which you have to apply and uh, will be enrolled and also do courses, or um, individual PhD programs um, where you basically just have a, um, yeah, a research topic and get into contact with one of our professors in order to uh, evaluate whether there would be a PhD position open. Yes, and this is basically um, yeah, a, a quick run through um, uh, uh, around all our offers. Um, we hope uh, that uh, you, um, yeah, we, we could give you some uh, valuable information. If there are any questions, you can um, find my email address here. It is anke.meisner at b-tu.de. And also with the QR code, you will also get to our contacts page where you can also address our admissions team or um, yeah, our student activity team. And uh, with this, um, Thank you so much uh, for your um, for listening, and we're very looking forward to see you soon, and uh, hope to welcome you as a part of the BTU family. And uh, for now, um, we're open to questions. Thank you, NK. Thanks to Christopher for the information today. Uh, 好，那我们也是鼓励大家赶紧把你的问题啊、呃，就像已经有同学已经打上来了，也欢迎大家赶快把你想要问的问题都赶紧打上来。我相信大家看刚刚已经看得到。呃，这个学校的有很多课程，真的是都非常符合我们现在全球的挑战，以及还有关于我们台湾，不管是未来的这个政策的走向，有很多的课程，呃，真的是呃都会非常需要你们现在你们。呃，可以出去学习的，赶紧回来，可以帮我们呃台湾再做更多的贡献。
yeah, I I was uh, telling uh, the audience tonight uh, uh, here, uh, there are so many courses that your institution offer is very, very, you know, uh, prioritized for the future uh, generation and also to look at the, the global challenge in the future. And also there are so, so many courses or programs are very, are targeted to our uh, Taiwan uh, governments, you know, either the policy or direction, something like the cybersecurity. This is something is not just Taiwan, and also it looks like the globe, the whole world is is very very looking at this program. So, I I was I am like encourage student to look at into your program and also to apply to your uh, courses. Okay, we do have some question. So. Um, that's uh, go for it. Uh, the first one is, if the student is study uh, for history subject in the on, for, on the undergraduate, so can he or she apply for the master uh, in in your BTU? So it's it's a history undergrad studies hmm. or um so um for um re regarding uh, what bachelors um uh, qualify you for our. Uh, master's programs, um, please check out our website. Um, there are, of course, um, um, some not, uh, as, as I said, some uh, subjects which are not in the STEM area, but we have, for example, um, the uh, urban design, the revitalization of historic mm -hmm. districts. That is, for example, a course uh, which is also um, uh, located in the faculty six, so in the architecture faculty. Um, we um, do not offer that many uh, social sciences. Mm -hmm. So um, history uh, might be, um, yeah, the, it might be hard to find something which then also makes sense for your career, depending on what on what you want to do. I mean, Thanks. that's um, ba basically the most important thing is uh, what you want to uh, pursue as a career. And um, yeah, if if we cannot offer the the fitting study program, um, that that would of you should not change uh, what you want to do just because of the university's offer. Um, but there is a quite a, a wide offer and um, uh, many programs also accept students who are not uh, from the um, exact background. So yeah, just check out our study programs and maybe you will find something which is interesting for you. Great. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, students should always like check on this uh, university's website and to look into the program content itself. Okay, next question. So when the uh, when the institution uh, when the university is like uh, go through the students application, what are the uh, most uh, maybe the unique or specific uh, target or or requirement or uh, the university is looking at? Maybe the score from the university or maybe the uh, project or or something. Uh, they have been or certificate or or anything. Yeah, what was the the university looking at when they uh, yeah. go through the registration? That is um, also very specific to the study programs. Mm -hmm. um, for example, for architecture, um, they are currently um, uh, requesting a portfolio um, of mm -hmm. um, yeah, or, um, let's say artistic work mm -hmm. um, in order to also yeah get a feeling whether the applicant has already yeah, uh, dipped their toes into um, uh, some designing and some, um, let's say, like um, construction. Um, so for, for example, for um, study programs in faculty six, architecture and urban planning, um, there is um, a portfolio, an artistic yeah. port portfolio re required. Um, other study programs, for example, of course, um, as you already said, artificial intelligence and also mm -hmm. cybersecurity, um, power engineering. These are programs where we have lots and lots of uh, applicants. So um, basically the the more um, background, the more qualified um, mm -hmm. you can, um, uh, yeah, uh, give certificates for, um, the better your chances are to be admitted. Um, I, I really have to be honest there. Um, uh, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity um, are very, very popular um, for our applicants and receive we receive a lot of applications for these um, study programs. Um, but also um, the professors who are doing the, 
the um, uh, admission uh, collection, they are also very thorough. They really take their time so that um, at least every applicant is checked and uh, really uh, evaluated. So um, yeah, it is always good um, to see. Um, also, we're, we're asking for a CV um, mm. to always see that you have um, yeah already connected with the topic or maybe have done your bachelor thesis uh, or a project around it. So um, it's very individual. I would say there's not these three things uh, which have to be in your application. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's always uh, good to, to show interest uh, in, a, mm. in an area. And uh, mm. what we also value is, for example, um, uh, volunteering or any kind of um, engagement outside of university mm. and studies. True. And so, of course, like uh, something like the motivation or study plan or uh, either maybe a part time job or the project that the student has been doing in the past. And exactly. Then, yeah, that will definitely useful and helpful for, for their uh, application as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Next question. Um, do most uh, the department have a, a specific restriction? Uh, it is a, a master degree program. Only uh, these uh, those who have graduated from a relevant department or subject with a bachelor degree can apply. Uh, there, so uh, it's as I said, it's very there, similar no, to the first question. Yeah, there mm -hmm. there's no minimum GPA on most of our programs. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a GPA for biotechnology um and social work so these are the only two which have gpas right now everything else uh, really depends on how many applicants there are mm -hmm. um, and how many spots will be filled right cool hey i guess i have one last question maybe that can extend to christopher and maybe ask christopher's opinion for that uh, christopher when you are studying uh, studying the program right now do you have any opportunity for internship or or, or do you uh, have any working experiences before you uh, taking the class or join the the university uh, I didn't have any experiences, but it's recommended for a lot of um, at least master study programs to to mm. go into internships. But I think for the most um, study courses, it's recommended but not mandatory. Right. So, um, like in my study course, I have to uh, in my study program, I have to make an internship about four weeks to um, to get a glimpse and to dip my toes into the working mm. process. But um, yeah. So I have to, for at least for me, I have to work in a city department for urban development or in an architecture bureau, um, and see if I like it. And I have to, um, yeah, write a protocol for it. But it's so not is, mandatory is, for the most. Areas. So is there a, the career center or the university can help to match or find the internship, uh, part-time job, and and from the university to the student? Yeah, I think there's there's like. Um, you can they help you to offer there's like a site where you can uh, find them and um yeah match to your uh, current mm -hmm. or to your uh, future internship um or through the company you want to do it so uh, i think there's a, a platform for it on yeah. on the btu side so sounds it's pretty easy mm -hmm. and there's also um a yearly event which is called campus exchange Mm. Um, and that is a big fair um, on the campus and uh, main campus in Cottbus, where a lot of um, companies um, have a, a, a yeah a little booth and uh, students can walk around and yeah at first of course introduce mm. themselves um, and also um, yeah get to know what there is uh, what perspectives the mm. uh, our region has to offer. Mm, that's very important also for the student to look for their future, maybe career or or something they might be interested in the industry. Thanks. Yeah, so I guess yeah, tonight is very informative. And thanks again to NK and also Christopher for your detailed information tonight. So uh, we hope to see you soon uh, or maybe see you both in, in tai, Taipei, Taiwan next year. Okay. Thanks Thank for you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye and bye. we hope to, to, to see some participants yes. maybe at BTU very soon. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.